I'd like to welcome Sarah and, and John from the UK, uh, who are going to run a workshop, quite interactive one, on clean language. And I've known John for some, some years. We've had a few experiences together at Scrum Gatherings um, around Europe, I think, and Prague comes to mind. And also went to one of John's meetups in, in London. Uh, that was a, a fantastic session. So yeah, John's got a lot of experience in enterprise coaching and Sarah too. I think uh, one thing I, I really love about Sarah and John's approach is that they drink their own champagne, as John puts it. <laughs> uh, so pairing, pair coaching, that's a, that's a great thing to see. And doing a clean setup, even at the start of this session, uh, basically doing what we're talking about in practice for, for their own, own practice. So yeah, Sarah's got a very varied background. I've just been chatting about how she ran a, a campsite in France for about 20 years. So uh, <laughs> fascinating experience there, but uh, so glad that uh, both of them are able to lead this session this evening. So let's welcome Sarah and John, everyone. Just have to oh. imagine here <laughs> over and clap. Over to you. So uh, welcome everyone. Uh, Rowan was just talking about a clean setup, um, and that's the tool that we're going to start with today. So we're not going to go into too much theory. We're going to give you that experience and then give you some time to reflect on how you can bring those experiences into your workplace. Clean setup is something that we use at the start of pretty much every session I run, uh, both on myself and with the teams that I work with. And so it's a really nice, I know some of you asked for a tool that you can take away and use which is why we brought this in, because uh, it's one of my favorites. So uh, there's going to be three questions. We're going to break you into three lots of breakout groups with three different people. Sarah and I will do a quick demo. Um, we'll put the questions in the chat, and then we'll put you in those breakout groups. If you do end up in a breakout group on your own, then uh, come back to the main group, and we'll try and sort, organize or sort it out with someone else. As long as you've got a pair, then you should be good for each exercise. Okay, so Sarah, for yes. this meetup to go just the way you'd like, it would be like what? It will be um, like a uh, party. Like a party? What kind yeah. of party? Like a sort of aperitif kind of party where you're just going around and chatting a little bit to people. Is there anything else about? Is there anything else about being a pre-party? Um, yeah, you can't go too much into depth and that kind of thing. It's, so it's a little bit. It's not small talk, but it's just that getting to know you kind of thing. Okay. And how about you? For this meetup to go just as you'd like, it will be like what? Uh, it would be fun, relaxed, uh, yeah, informative for the people who came. And when it's fun, what kind of fun is that? Um, lots of smiles, uh, enjoyable, um, maybe some laughs even. I might pull out a few more of my dad jokes, you know, just, <sighs> just, just fun, enjoyable, relaxed, happy, and when it's laughing. Fun, there'll be smiles, there may be some dad jokes, laughing and informative. Is there anything else about informative? Um, I'd really like people to go away with a couple of really kind of tangible tools that they can start using straight away um, with their teams. I think that would be a good outcome uh, for this session. Okay, so let's check in with others in the room. As John said, we'll be putting you into breakout rooms in threes. It'll be quite paced, quite speedy. And you'll just be asking yourselves those three questions. So for this meetup to go just as you'd like, it will be like what? And then if you feel up to it, have a go at using those clean questions. John and I both use them then. What kind of is that? And where the X is, you sort of put in something that the other person said, something that caught your attention, that you're curious to know a little bit more about. And then you can ask them, is there anything else about that or about something else that they've said? Yeah. Any the, uh, questions, questions before? Are in, the, yeah. Yeah, the questions are in the chat as well. So you can, they'll follow you into the breakout groups. Any questions about the exercise logistics before we 
maybe into the groups. Uh, how much time yeah. will we be in the breakouts for? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes for this first round. So you've roughly got about a minute and a half each by the time you get in and, and say hello. So two or three questions should be enough. If you get around everyone, then you can ask a few more. Start to be curious and try and stick to the clean language questions as much as you can. Okay, let's give it a go. Five minutes starting now. You didn't realize there was a time limit to the group. Ah, yes. Only five minutes. So just a couple of questions each. It's a good sign if it went too quick. Probably means that you were really getting curious about each other stuff, that's my uh, inference. It's one of the things we try and do in clean language quite often is to separate out our evidence from the stuff we're making up. And it's quite amazing how much stuff we make up in our everyday. We're gonna go straight into the second question. Now, when you go back into breakout groups, you're gonna with different people. You don't have to go back and explain how you'd like the meetup to be. You can go straight into the second question. Uh, which is for it to be like that, you'd be like what, Sarah? It, sorry, John. So we, we were not meant to do the three sections, the three, the three questions on this breakup. This no, first just the first question. Uh, <laughs> the first question was for this uh, meetup to go just the way you'd like, it would be like what? Oh, and then okay. When, and then after that, you'll go back in and go, for it to be like that, you'd be like what? We, our team did all three. <laughs> That's good. Wow. Then you can go deeper in the next time. You must have been yes. super quick. Super quick. Wow. Yeah. Well so the, the clean, like John said, the clean setup is made up of three questions. For the meetup to uh, go just as you'd like, it will be like what? You'll be like what? And then the final question: What support and resources do you need? If you're familiar with the clean setup, you may have done all of those three already. And what we're suggesting is that you, we break them down into smaller chunks. So this first one, we're asking you when the meetup goes like that, um, it will be like what? And encouraging you to use some clean language questions to find out a little bit more about how that would be. And we've put some clean language questions in the chat. Some people refer to them as the lazy Jedi questions. And you'll have heard me and J John demoing them. What kind of fun is that? Or what kind of party is that? And is there anything else about that? So if you're familiar with the questions, have a go at using them. Uh, if you're not, just, you know, notice the kinds of questions that you're asking. The thing with clean is that it's trying to separate out your stuff from the other person's stuff. And they're questions that just enable you to get really curious. So for me, when the meetup goes just as I'd like, it will be like a party and I will be like a water boatman. Uh, what kind of water boatman? Um, a shimmering water boat man flitting around on the river. Is there anything else about flittering? Um, yeah, it's light. <laughs> it's like this. I don't know what my hands are doing, but it's just it's like flittering, jumping around from uh, person to person, from thing to thing in a light kind of way. And for you, John, when it's um, fun and informative, you'll be like what? Um, I'll be uh, relaxed, hilarious, um, high energy. <laughs> relaxed, hilarious, so I'm already making high me energy. Laugh. <laughs> You're making me laugh. Um, what kind of relaxed is that relaxed when there's high energy? Uh, it's the... The relaxed is that um, the session flows, that um, the timings all work, um, that we don't need to make too many um, adaptions to that side of things, that it just flows. But high energy is more in kind of, uh, it, um, is more kind of, I can be relaxed and just have all of that in place. And then I can have high energy in 
how I present, how I work with the group and uh, focus. Mm. So relaxed and high energy. And is there anything else uh-huh. about that high energy? Um, uh, no, I think that's I think that's everything. All right. So hey. that was our short little demo. Now we'll move you into breakout rooms. And like John said, you'll be probably with different um, threes. So you don't need to talk about what happened in the previous session. Just at the, ask that question. When the meetup goes the way you'd like, you will be like what? And if you want to have a go at practicing those clean language questions, what kind of pick up a word that they've mentioned? Is there anything else about that? Yeah, five using minutes, the web so version, be... the, the chat might not transfer across, so copy and paste yeah. them, or uh, someone can do it as soon as you get into the breakout groups. Yeah. Okay, five minutes starts now. Welcome okay. back, everyone. Uh, so now we're going to go into the third part. And the third part's a really important part of this tool. So you've already explored how you'd like the meetup to be and how you need to be in order for the meetup to be like that. And the reason why we do that is because uh, one of the things around systemic modeling, which is the kind of clean language we're teaching you here, is that it puts the ownership a lot more on the participants to express their own needs. And so the third question we ask is, what's for, in order for it to be like that and you to be like that, what support or resources do you need? Uh, and then you express those, you try and own them for yourselves, and then normally you would then express any that the group needs to know about as a whole group. We're not going to do that bit today. We're just going to do the bit where you talk and express your support or resources that you need. So Sarah, what support or resources do you need? Um... I'm okay. I need to remember to stand up and be light on my feet. And how about you? What support and resources do you need? Um, just the ones that I talked about this morning. So I've got our kind of timesheet going. Um, I've mastered the breakout rooms now. I'm feeling quite energized after going to the gym this morning. So um, I like to tell everyone that I've gone to the gym. That also gives me energy and uh, yeah. adds to the... the hilariousness that I'm trying to be right now. <laughs> okay. So that's what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to break you into different groups again. This will be the last round. You're going to have slightly less time. So I'm just going to give you four minutes just to capture these support or resources and really try and own those things that you need in order to for this meetup to be just the way you'd like. There's a question in the chat. Uh, yep. Okay, four minutes. Starting now. So I told my friend, I said, can't, can't do anything with you today because I'm going to Australia. She's like, really? I'm like, no, just by Zoom. But maybe. I got to drop off, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry, I can't stay on. Enjoy your no stay. No problem, James. Thanks, James. Great to see you. Yeah, look, we'd love to have you, Sarah, in Australia. <laughs> Let's, uh, keep, I will keep be there. there. Yeah, we, we have talked about it. I really want to come over for the Lions tour. I think it's in, I've still got a few years for my 40th. So we'll see. I'll definitely have to arrange something in person then. Right, everyone else is back. So we shall uh, continue. So now that you've answered those three questions as part of the clean setup, uh, we just want to get a few shout outs from people about what it was like and how they're going to use it with their teams. Hey guys, John got here. Something. Hey John, yeah. hey, great um, names. Thank you, yeah, same as yours. Um, basically, the, the biggest thing with those three questions or, or those three um, sort of sections was when you put the word Yule into it, it, it changes the concept of just uh, trying to give you a generic answer versus thinking a little bit more deeper and, and how it's going to, or what you want out of it. So I think just even that simple word change was uh, changed the perception of the person that you were asking to and, and to yourself when you get asked that question. 
Hmm. Okay, and what difference will that make, John? That simple word change. Um, I think it makes me. It makes it more personable to that person. Like you, okay. either you, uh, you as a person that's asking, it feels. I think anyway, it feels like um, what you're showing that other person is that you actually care what they think about, rather than saying it. You say you you're showing respect or you're showing a little bit more um i guess uh detailed that that you want from them as a personal thing rather than the, a generic question okay yeah. so for john it's the power of you and making it more personal yep. is that something different oh we've got uh, melinda with her hand up oh got melinda <laughs> Yeah, so just, just to build on the Yule, I think a lot of times when I'm facilitating workshops, I ask people what they want out of the workshop, but in a way that's almost saying what I have to give them. Um, but what I found really powerful about this set of questions is it's like, it's almost like what you have to give yourself, you know, it's, it's actually your responsibility to identify what you want and what you'll do to get that, not me, not me, the facilitator. Yeah, so it switches from a list of things that I've got to do as a facilitator to what you've got to do as an individual. Okay, who's got something different? Yeah, I think it's I just want to elaborate on uh, Melinda because I think uh, the accountability part is very important when you coach. It is important to understand what the side that actually needs to action on things wants to have. So they'll feel that accountability from a, a trust and a place that they want to go rather than, a, and they agree with, rather than a place that they, they are told to. Okay, uh, your, your line's not great. So I'm not going to repeat that one back. Um, perhaps summarize it in the, in the chat if you, if you can. Thank you. And who's got a way that they're going to use it uh, in their work? I think I just got an, an idea, which is good because that's what I would be struggling to see how can I use this in teams. So I'm a scrum master and I was thinking just now that uh, I can use this in a retrospective actually. Um, to talk about the sprint, how it went, or how the iteration went, right? If, or, or, or maybe in the planning, how would you like it to be? For the sprint to be um, just the way you like it, what would it be like? Um, so this is a, a really good <laughs> uh, thing that I just found, something, a place where I can use it rather than to think is, it's because to me, it seems a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching or like conflict resolution, things like that, but I didn't think of how can I use this in a team setting. Um, it seems that can work in that way. Yeah, so you can use it as part of planning. It's great as part <laughs> of a new product, uh, product creation, so for this product to go just the way you'd like, it would be like what? Mm. Or if you're still doing projects, again, at the start of a project. Um, so whenever you're starting a new piece of work, it works particularly well in your Scrum teams. Melinda, I assume you just haven't put your hand down yet? Great. And we've got okay, so we'll give you... Kynan with his hand up. Oh, go on then. We'll take one more and then we'll move on, but there will be more time to get more learnings at the end. I just wanted to check on that last one. If you're using it in a team situation or in a workshop like this, would you be doing like a little breakout? session to start off with um so the again one of the great things about uh, this tool is its versatility so you can do it in you know 15 minutes like we've done with quite a big group or you can stay as one whole team and explore it as a whole group and go into more detail so you can range it from anywhere from 10 minutes all the way up to kind of an hour depending like how much time you want to invest in that setup so if it's a whole project setup then you want to invest the hour. If you're running a one hour workshop, then you want to maybe just spend five, 10 minutes just to get people uh, thinking about how they'd like the session to be. So it's very versatile and there's no right or wrong whether you put people in breakouts or you stay as one group. Thanks. Okay, so the next exercise we're gonna do um, is called the five senses. 
um, and we're going to use this tool um, to help you explore the differences and what people make up about stuff uh, and also give you a bit more exposure of those clean language questions. Now Sarah's going to facilitate a goldfish bowl for this so we're going to need six volunteers so if you want to volunteer keep your camera on and what we'd ask is that anyone who doesn't want to volunteer turn their camera off right now and we're hoping to have around six people that keep their camera on that's our high dream for this. Uh, I can see for uh, I can see three people so far. Any more volunteers? Uh, there we uh, we go. We've got it. Seven. Seven's great. So Seven's that's fine. fine. Yeah. Okay. What I what I want the others to do that are just observing is notice as much as possible. Notice what Sarah's doing but also notice what the group are doing. And at the end, I'll ask you for your reflections on what you've noticed. So you've actually got the harder job if you're not volunteering, because you're the one that are writing all those notes and observing as much as possible. Okay, I'm gonna give you around uh, 15 minutes, Sarah. Yeah, okay, so like John said, we're gonna do an activity called Five Senses. Again, it's something that can take much longer. We're just gonna give you a short, uh, demo of this um, and it's an activity that gets us to pay attention on how we make sense of the world so some people might be quite visual you might be really noticing people's backgrounds others might be paying more attention to noise you've got birds road noise or something happening and others you might you know be really uh, aware of your bum on the seat the temperature of the room around you so in a moment I'm going to give you an instruction and I invite you just to notice what happens and then we'll share, uh, share your experiences with this group. So see a monkey. See a monkey. And who's got something? Melinda. Do what, what's do happening for you? Yeah, well, tell me what's I, going on for you. I could just see a monkey. Like, I mean, <laughs> it was blue and fuzzy and it looked like a monkey. Blue fuzzy monkey. And whereabouts was that blue fuzzy monkey? There. There. And is there anything else about that blue fuzzy monkey? It's there. But to really concentrate to see it. You had to really concentrate to see it. And when you really concentrated, then what happened? Um, then it was there. And it was there. Yeah. And who's got something different to that when see a monkey? Giselle. Yeah, I um, so I think what I noticed first, I have to close my eyes to, to see it. And when I close my eyes, I just saw this book for my kids with hmm. the monkeys on the trees. Hmm. And you closed your eyes and you just saw a book your kids and a monkey in the trees and what kind of monkey was that monkey i don't know exactly what type of monkey it is but it was it's, it's not only one monkey like there are three trees and the monkey with the little baby attached to him or her like a book? jumping yeah uh, no, i just i didn't see the monkeys. book yeah i didn't yeah. see the book i saw the image of the book i think okay. i remember yeah and the image of the book and jumping monkeys and there's one with a little baby. Yeah. And who's got something different again? Charlotte. So I had an image of a monkey. It's a photo that I took of one in, um, in Thailand a few years ago. And um, hmm. I just thought it was interesting that what flashed off in my mind was the, the photo that I'd taken of the monkey that I'd seen recently and not the actual experience of seeing the monkey mm. at the time. It flashed, flashed up that photograph of taking, a mon of, of, of taking a monkey in Thailand. And is there anything else about that photo? Um, not really, just like it's a, yeah, a monkey on a beach in Thailand. Ah, eating. a monkey on a beach <laughs> eating. Yeah. And yeah. Anything else about that monkey when he's on a beach and he's eating? Uh, 
eating yeah like corn on the cob it's a big male monkey it looks a bit fierce okay yep so we've got big male monkey on a beach in thailand eating a corn on the cob and we've got monkeys jumping through trees from a book maybe for giselle's kids and we've got a blue fuzzy monkey just just there and who's got something different again peter yeah thank you sarah i i thought of the movie planet of the apes to be honest mm -hmm. and the iconic finish in the end where charlton heston's in front of the statue of liberty and saying you fools you you made a mess of it all and then within the flash of a memory flick to the simpsons episode where they're doing the musical takeoff of planet of the apes and singing the song i'd rather be a monkey or you've made a monkey out of me so that that was my train of thought in about three seconds from that that, that prompt hmm. they had a train of thought about three seconds it started with planet of the apes and charlton heston and then the simpsons and singing that tune you made a monkey out of me yeah. yeah and is there anything else about that it was just a very yeah a very quick train of thought of literally monkey apes movie takeoff of movie funny bit and memorable part of movie hmm. yeah. And when there's all of those monkeys and that train of thought, whereabouts is all of that? Oh, it's in the, I suppose, the setting of the original movie and then in the uh, the TV episode and it's the characters and, and the monkey characters, not so much the human characters, but the monkey characters or the ape characters, mm -hmm. I should say, yeah. Okay, and a really quick train of thought, three Just seconds and all those yeah. Yeah, monkey characters. Monkey and, characters, uh, yeah. Monkey characters, and is it Kynan? Um, What's happening for you when you see a monkey? Yeah. Uh, well, I saw a kind of, kind of dubious, sinister kind of a monkey, mm. which it took me a while to recognise. A dubious, sinister kind of monkey, and whereabouts was that dubious, sinister kind of monkey? Uh, sitting on a chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else about that monkey? When it's dubious, well, I, sinister, I, sitting on a chair. I recognized it from a story that I had just read, a um, Murakami story. It was mm. this monkey that was stealing someone's name. Mm. And a monkey stealing someone's name, sitting on a chair, a dubious, sinister kind of monkey. And who's got something different again? Jazz, what's happening for you? Um, hi everyone. Yeah, so when you said monkey, first first I saw one monkey in my the image that that came up to me, and then uh, I had uh, memory flash uh, running in front of my eyes because I was in India a month ago, and then uh, a couple of months ago, and then I I was there, and there was a big big reserve that we were crossing by, and so huge. Um, mass of monkeys there jumping up and down and some there were little baby monkey monkeys clinging to their mothers and then they were eating food and then they were looking they were running around and they were um, dangling from the branches of the tree from one tree to another and you had a memory and, flash and a monkey yeah. and then India and all of these monkeys dangling from trees and the babies and running around. Yeah. And whereabouts were those monkeys? They were in a reserve. Hmm. And uh, they were in a reserve. So and, and there was a, a main road passing through the reserve. So that's how we saw them. Hmm. And anything else about those monkeys when they're in a reserve? Very cheeky monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got cheeky monkeys in India in a reserve. And we've got uh, that dubious, sinister kind of monkey stealing someone's name. And for Peter, that whole train of thought, three seconds, Planet of the Apes, Simpsons, and all those monkey characters. And who haven't we heard from? Liat, for you see a monkey um it started from a monkey on a white background mm. and then uh, slowly i revealed that monkey sitting on a a branch uh from there it went back to a book that i used to read to my kids mm. 
Um, got a monkey on a white background, then a monkey on a uh, branch, and then it goes back to a book. And when there's all of that, whereabouts are all of those monkeys? So this little monkey is actually a child and is looking for his mom in the forest. And there's another mm. uh, small butterfly that, that tends to help him. Yeah, so a monkey in a book looking for his mom in the forest. And there's a small butterfly. Anything else about that monkey when he's looking for his mum in a forest? Uh, he's puzzled why the little uh, butterfly doesn't understand that his, his uh, mum should, like, should look like him. Mm. And not like I think I know, else. Yeah, I think I know that <laughs> book. Yeah, so there's a mum, a monkey looking for his mum and a butterfly and the monkey's puzzled because the, the butterfly doesn't know that his mum should look like him. And there was a monkey on a branch and a monkey in a white background. And Patrick, for you, and see a monkey. Yeah, so I'm, I'm seeing an angry animated monkey. An angry animated monkey. And when you're seeing that animated monkey, whereabouts are you seeing it? Um, just beside my seat on top of a box of boxes. Nah. My apartment. Ah, and there's an angry animated monkey and you're seeing uh -huh. it right there in your apartment on shoe boxes and anything else about that angry animated monkey and he's right there uh, it, it's pointing at something it, it's pointing oh. it's pointing at the carpet i don't ah. understand why it's pointing something at the carpet ah and what kind of monkey is it it's angry animated anything else about that monkey uh it's a, it's a small carpet. one um ah. it's brown and it's angry, yeah. Okay, so we've got a small brown angry monkey sitting on the shoe boxes, pointing at the carpet. And for Lyat, we've got that monkey in a book. And he's puzzled looking for his mum. And before we move on, let's just find out. I've noticed that Franz put in the uh, chat here. Patrick's got this angry monkey. For Fran, he thinks the carpet needs vacuuming. So let's just pause you there. What else are you making up about Patrick's monkey? Let's get a couple of thoughts from you. We've heard about all of your monkeys. And for Patrick, he's got this angry monkey sat on a shoebox. He's pointing at the carpet. What are you making up about all of that? Peter, what's going on for you? Helps a few minutes. I, I can't help but thinking, Sarah, why is he angry? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what, so you're just wondering why is he why why might he be angry? What are you yeah, making up about? What's he seen that I haven't seen that could be triggering him? Yeah. Yeah. So you're just curious about yeah. what why he's angry, what's triggering him. Who's yeah. got something different to that? What else could you be making up about Patrick's angry monkey pointing at the carpet? Kynan? I feel like that monkey might have a kind of a message for Patrick. Ah, what kind of message could that message be? Mm. It's maybe something he's got to pay attention to. So he's an angry monkey. Peter's curious. You're thinking that maybe it's a message. Who's got something different? It makes me Let's think have... of an, yeah, a message, sorry. Like yeah, go ahead. Kainan is saying something about, it's right there. This is, this is it. I don't know, something that you are looking for or thinking of or a solution for a problem. It's like, it's, it's right there. Yeah, so it's a monkey the answer is there. <laughs> message and the answer's right there. And Patrick, don't, ask, don't answer this question. I'm just going to ask the others in the group. When this monkey is sitting on these shoe boxes and he's pointing at the carpet, what colour is Patrick's carpet? Grey. Grey. Okay, so for Yaz, it's a, a grey. Melinda thinks it's a blue carpet. Who else is... Who's got something different to that? Red. Red. Grey, red, blue carpet. Anything else about that monkey, the shoe boxes, the carpet when he's pointing? He's maybe got a message, but he's angry. What else are you doing with all of that?
Go on, Peter. We know that you've got a train of thought that goes quick from Simpsons to Charlton Heston in three seconds. What are you doing with all of that information? You're, about? you're visualizing it. You're processing it. You're looking for a pattern, a conclusion, a, a direction, a question, a hypothesis, an experiment. Where's it going? How do I get there? What do I want to uncover? Yeah. yeah. So you're trying to make sense of all of that That's information. It, yeah. Sense yeah. yeah. Sense making. So let's check in with Patrick. We've got a red carpet, a grey carpet, a blue carpet, a monkey that's sitting there. He's maybe got a message. Patrick, tell us what colour is your carpet? Um, it's a mix of green and grey. Oh, no. We've all got it wrong. And just while John's coming back, let's just check in. We've got these monkeys. So for Melinda, a blue fuzzy monkey. For Kynan, we've got that sinister dubious monkey sitting on a chair stealing somebody's name we've got that monkey in a book uh wondering uh, where his mum could be for charlotte we've got that monkey on the beach uh, i think it was a fierce monkey wasn't it eating a corn on a cob peter that really quick train of thought charlton heston planet of the apes uh we've got that monkey uh, or those monkeys in the indian reserve those cheeky monkeys and then, um, ooh, uh, yeah, we've got Peter's monkey um, sat on the shoe boxes, pointing at the carpet. And then for Gazelle, we've got that uh, book, her children's book with those jump, jumping monkeys. So when there's all of that, what are you noticing? So others can uh, that have been observing now, this is your opportunity to say what you are noticing. Let's start with what you noticed about the, the groups and what they were doing. John, I noticed that everybody makes up their own story. Everyone's creating their own narrative. Yeah. What, what kind of story, Fran, does everyone make up? A story that is um, drawn from their own experience, uh, the lens that they're looking at life through. So, um, whatever's happened, they're, they're interpreting events through that. So Fran, for Fran, it's a story based on their uh, life experiences. And Angela's put in the chat that everyone monkey is different. Who's got something different that they noticed about what happened with the group? I, I noticed that uh, the, I think the initial question was see a monkey and to, to add on to the, I guess the comments is, is that uh, the, the feedback was is each of those, the interpretation of see a monkey was different. What uh, Sarah did was she, she then uh, pointed the observations back to the, to, to the person and then that was used as I guess reflections for the other people to actually uh, provide their thoughts on 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 uh, see a monkey which was actually different in itself yeah so what did you see or hear Sarah do that was putting it back on the group she uh, I, I observe Sarah uh, I guess uh, not copying the language but uh, I guess uh, repeating the, the responses and playing it back to the uh, to the person for them to reflect on it. Okay, repeating back so they could reflect on it. Who noticed something different Sarah was doing? Uh, I noticed that she was changing her tone of voice at times to to relate to what the the coach here had just been. Saying, I guess when it was something like a sinister monkey, for example, uh, uh, angry, <laughs> changing to her voice. She was changing her voice, depending on what's going on with the group. What was the impact of that, Rowan? A uh, good question might be different for different people, but um, it definitely kind of it brought alive the for me a little bit about what was going on. Maybe I'm a bit auditory and not just visual, but uh, for me, it was kind of animating it more. Okay, and he's got something different they noticed Sarah did. Uh, 
Hong Kinan. Am I allowed? Because I was in the group. Yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, let you just this once. Thanks. I noticed this area was doing like the actions. Did somebody already say that? She's doing the actions and the monkey leaping and the holding the little mm. monkey and sort of really visual. What difference did that make? Um, I don't know, it sort of made it a bit relatable or it just sort of got me in a bit more to the kind of what was happening. Maybe in, involved me more bodily or something. Okay, so it got you more involved, more embodying. And in the chat, Sarah's talked about the whereabouts question to try and help with that, to try and get those things a location and so that they, they're a bit stickier for each other. And people talked about how you can just ask one simple question or a simple instruction like see monkeys and how different people are. And if you think of a simple instruction like see monkeys and the difference there, imagine how much variety there is in some of the complexity of the work we do in software development and how variety and difference creeps in. So what we're gonna do is uh, put you into breakout groups. I think someone had their hand up, but they put it back down. I don't know if they did wanna speak or they can save it for about another five minutes. Uh, we're gonna put you into breakout groups to discuss um, what you did notice, uh, what difference it will make to you and how you can use it in your work. We have so got a question you know from Maurice in the chat. What is the point of this? Uh, looks a little bit like a hippie group psychoanalysis. So let's pop you off into the breakout rooms and go, yeah. when there is this, when you've just had this experience, how can we use this? What, you know, what was the point of doing an exercise like that? And how could you use it in your teams? Yeah, so we'll give you five minutes for that. Starting now. Uh, you can imagine. So, welcome back. Um, so hopefully you had some nice discussions uh, for that last five minutes. So now uh, we're going to capture any questions. So if you want to shout out your questions, we'll capture them on the flip chat and then we'll answer them all once we've got uh, all of the questions that people have got. So who's got a question about the experience you've been through today? Giselle. Hey. But I think something that came up in my team, and I, it's how can you, because the, the, the question seems to be, or the framework seems to be very repetitive. You always ask the same questions. Uh, whether you're, if I use it with my team, it will get a bit boring because there's always the same questions. It could be for different things, but again, it's the same question. So how can you manage so, that? How can you manage that it might get a bit boring and it's the same questions? And what's important about that question for you, Giselle? Because I'm thinking I, I, I would like to use it, but it seems this one, one tool that I will probably use once and not. I don't see the application multiple times unless it's for different team, for different people. OK. Who's got a different question? It's a very different question. Um, so, so my question was, how, how do you feel about taking notes? Because like I noticed as soon as I started getting the breakout rooms, I grabbed my post-its and my pen. Um, is there an expectation that I should be paying so much attention that I remember? Or is it okay for me to be writing people's answers on a post-it? How do you feel about notes? Is it okay for me to... I think write it notes me, and write things on post-its. It would make me really nervous if I felt like, I actually honestly couldn't tell if Sarah was doing it from memory, but it would make me a bit nervous if I felt like I had to remember what each person said. Okay. So it'd make you a bit nervous. I'm not sure what Sarah was doing. Who's got a different question so I've about got a the question. experience today? Go on, Derek. From Vinny. So how do you know as successful... Uh, facilitator that you are heading in the right way and what tips uh, not to do? Vinny, is, is there anything else on that? 
if you stop. Hey, Derek, right. they work for me. <laughs> no, um, I'm like all great techniques for me. I, I feel I only learn if I try it. So I'm going to try it tomorrow um, for a wee while at least. So I'm just wondering what not to do. Um, and how do I know that as a facilitator, are there any indicators that you know that we're heading the right way or we should pivot? Okay. Uh, Kinnan? Got a question? Yeah, um, somebody was asking in our group, would we use this in a conflict situation? Um, so I thought I'd pass that question on. Okay. So anything else about that question? It was mentioned in your group. Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. Uh, Rowan, you had a question there? Yeah. Uh, to what degree is the coach trying to draw out the coach's intuitive first thought without them filtering it and becoming self conscious? What's well, important about that, that question to you? Oh, you, you felt that's what was happening. Yeah, it, it, it's felt a bit that way at times. Yeah. So I just wondered if that was okay. a deliberate thing or something to encourage or discourage. Okay. Any different questions? I'm guessing your hand's still up from before, Kinan. <gasps> yeah, sorry. Got time for one more question and we'll get to answer. Going once, going twice. All right, let's go answering, Sarah. Uh, okay, so um, taking notes or remembering, that's um, possibly the easiest one. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a few years and I've built up my um, ability to remember stuff. So I do remember quite a lot of things. There were eight people in that fishbowl then, that's a little bit more than I'm comfortable working with. So I was taking some really, um, like basic notes just as a prompt. But I think the thing is, it depends what you're doing it for. So what I'm actually doing with that kind of exercise is to uh, create curiosity through the group. I don't really need to remember all the details of your stuff, but I'm just trying to make it be interesting enough for you to be curious about your own stuff. And then if we had a bit more time to get curious about e each other's stuff. So I just need to know that it's a blue fuzzy monkey or a, a sinister dubious monkey sat on a chair and start noticing the patterns, which I think also comes into this comment here of um, Rowan's, like, what are we doing this for? And actually, they're all a bit linked, aren't they? How do you know that you're heading yeah. in the right way? So my, my purpose in doing that is not really to find out about your monkeys. But it's to get a group to be curious about each other's stuff. And if we had more time, we'd have gone on to another sense. So we might have done something like taste lemon. And then we might have been starting to look at patterns. So Peter, is it OK if I refer to your pattern? We, we saw with Peter, he had a train of thought. He started with Planet of the Apes and um, The Simpsons. So it would be really interesting if we were working with Peter to know if he always does that. So when I say um, taste lemon, does he do the same thing and have one thing and then another thing and another thing? And with Charlotte, um, she, she noticed her own pattern, which was that she was like, oh, this is really curious. I've gone to a memory, I've gone to a pattern and not to a real, uh, to a photo and not to a real monkey. So when we do the five senses, it's really to get people to start looking at how they relate to stuff. And then when we're working with a team to notice each other's patterns. And then what difference would doing that make when we were working together? So I don't need to remember all of the stuff. I'm taking enough notes to keep it sticky so that I can refer to it. And I'm really clear of what I'm doing it for. The other top tip there is if you do forget, ask the group. So if you can't remember what some, some one stuff was, then uh, move it to the group and ask them. 
Melinda, is your question linked? Yeah, you said you were really clear about what you were doing it for. Do you find that it's more useful for everyone else not to be clear about what you're doing it for? Or for you to kind of tell people what the purpose is before they do it? Um, yeah, so what I would do and what we do if we had longer is to um, frame it. So I did a really short frame this time. I said, we'll be looking, we'll be doing a short exercise that helps us to notice how we make sense of the world. And our overriding thing is that we've already framed this session. It's a meetup. It's an introduction to clean language. So we came up with this exercise to get, to get you to have an experience of clean language because that's how we think um, people learn at their best. And we chose something light like see a monkey so that we could be talking about that kind of stuff we don't have a contract to talk about anything else and we don't have any time to go into and things in any more detail and linking in with this how can you ask questions without being boring i was specifically limiting the questions that i was using so that you would be hearing them and you could get practicing them yourselves so there's loads of other questions that we can ask. And normally I would be weaving those kind of questions in. Um, and when there's a you know monkey and he's sat on the carpet and he's pointing, he's sat on the box and he's pointing, then what happens? And it's all to build these little models. But I specifically, my purpose was to be asking you the similar kind of questions so you'd be hearing them and you could be thinking about how you were going to use them. Yeah, I think also um, what, what we've been taught is that your allegiance is always to the group, not to the clean language questions. Um, and therefore, uh, we ask the question that's going to be the best for the group. And the group themselves don't necessarily ask clean questions to each other. So if we'd have gone a bit further, you would have seen more interaction between the group members, and they're not necessarily all going to be clean as well. I think the other thing is that I've done the five senses probably, I don't know, 30 times now, and it hasn't got boring for me yet. And that's just kind of one exercise of the clean language group because everyone's, you know, monkeys or elephants or whatever you decide are so different. I just get fascinated by people's uh, stuff. And this specific exercise is there as a kind of an intro in something that's quite neutral um, that everyone can kind of have a little fun with almost like an icebreaker before you get into kind of um, a, a more serious theme like how you're working at your best or um, view you agile is like what or whatever theme you're trying to explore as a group is. Um, I've put my agile scoping blog in here that will help you give a bit more context to the framing uh, question that we asked about how you build that up. Uh, it's based on Caitlin's Walker clean scoping and then changed for agile. Um, and can we use it in drama? Um, so Sarah <laughs> runs uh, quite an intense uh, set of workshops called hashtag drama free um, on just that topic. You could do weeks of sessions just on using clean language with drama. I've put a link to the um, book on that supports that course as well in the chat. Um, I'm not sure how you get it down under, I'm afraid. Perhaps it's on, and I know you struggle sometimes to, to get books in, in Australia. We've put quite a lot of resources. And if you go onto the Clean Learning website, there's quite a lot of blog um, posts that give you some examples of how you can use it. But if you think about what we just did, so we've got this group of eight people and we say, see a monkey. And then what, um, what you'll have seen me doing is hearing from everybody, asking a similar number of questions and getting a similar amount of information. We do the same thing with conflict. And, you know, I, I, had, I was working with a team the other day. It might sound a little bit ludicrous, but we spent two hours talking about air conditioning. There are masses of drama about whether or what temperature the air conditioning should be on in their office. So you've got some people who like... Uh, get really sweaty they can't bear it they go and turn the air conditioning on then somebody huffs and they're freezing cold and they go and turn it down and there's all of this sort of stuff kicking off about air conditioning now if we go straight in and start talking about air conditioning all that drama is there if we go in and start talking about monkeys and 
uh, fish and salt and all the rest of it. They're like, what are you doing? But what we're doing is creating that sort of uh, rule that everybody's voice gets equal attention. We're moving attention around the room. We're getting curious about each other. And then once we've done that, we've shown people how they can listen, how they can ask questions. We can start going, okay, and, and air conditioning. So for you, what's going on with the air conditioning? Okay, it's like that. And for you, it's like that. And you, it's like that. And then we might take it up a level as we could have done with the monkeys. We start, what are you noticing? So when we've got all of these different opinions about air conditioning, what are you noticing about some of the rules that you've got in your office? Some of them might be unspoken. Some of them might be explicit. What are you noticing about your behavior when all of this is going on? Are you in drama? You know, are you feeling sorry for yourself? Or are you feeling angry with all the others? And it's really just creating a space for people to start noticing stuff, noticing their own patterns, noticing patterns in others, but without judgment. You know, if we've got these patterns, we've got these rules, they've come from somewhere. We weren't born with, you know, an automatic desire to turn the air conditioning down. So somehow along our path, along our life's experience, we've developed these rules. And it's just a really clean way of investigating and going. So, so you know, what is going on for you? Cool. We're almost at time. We've got the tips of not what to do. So my top tip is to... Uh, so it's what to do, I suppose, but we can turn it around. So stick to the clean language questions when you're facilitating, because that will avoid you getting involved into other people's stuff. As soon as you lose neutrality when facilitating uh, this stuff, things start to go horribly wrong. So the first thing to do is to try and stay and remain as neutral as possible. And the best way of remaining neutral is using the clean language questions, I find. Yeah, my tip, tip would Sarah? be... Yeah, keep it simple. Sometimes when you like the clean language questions are available, you'll find them on the website and they'll go, oh, look at these questions. And it's like a woodpecker, you know, like, oh, I nearly said a rude word. Um, you know, <laughs> stu stuff off, you know, leave me alone. They can go quite deep. So if you, unless you've got somebody's explicit permission to ask clean language questions, just ask one or two. You know, do you want to come for a walk with me? Yeah, what kind of walk? Anything else about that? Okay, and just practice using them in that light sort of um, natural kind of way before you start introducing them, you know, in your coaching or with your clients, because they can sometimes go quite deep and you don't necessarily have somebody's permission to go um, to go there. Uh, any other? Th so intuitive first thought, self-conscious. Yeah, we're, we're trying to make it so that people can be themselves and um one of the things that really made a big difference to me is uh, marion way saying to me your voice represents all the other voices that are like you so it's to create that space where when something happens for you you can say it and it can be uh, honored welcomed into the group and we just go okay and it's like that for you so if somebody had said you know i'm not picturing a monkey um I'm thinking about a camel from when we went on safari. Okay, and you're thinking about a camel. Great, lovely. Isn't that interesting? I wonder how else, how many other times that happens. So when we're in, you know, work and we're talking about a new project, this person's mind goes somewhere else. That's really important for me to know as a team leader, because I need to know, you know, how people's brains work so that when they start going off and talking about camels or talking about something else, I know, I know what's going on and it doesn't upset me because I thought we were talking about monkeys. Yeah. Does that yeah, the, answer that one, Rowan? Yeah. The other thing is that sometimes people won't see a monkey at all and that's also okay. And we just explore that the same. We talk about clean being very equal opportunities. So you literally um, ex offer and extend anything that someone says in the group and we treat everyone equal, no matter what where they're coming from, what they say, how they act and what they do. And if you read um, uh, the Caitlin's book from Contempt to Curiosity, she does this with um, teenagers that have been kind of kicked out of schools uh, from really underprivileged areas. And I always say, if she can do it with that, then a couple of software developers must be easy. 
All right, so okay. we're pretty much we're on time. time. Yeah, thank you very much for your participation, uh, for joining us this evening, for your questions. Hope it's been uh, informative, uh, that you will be able to use it in your coaching skills and your work, and it is all part of your continuous learning. We've put loads of resources and sort of next steps in the chat. If you want to join us on one of our future events, you're very welcome. Join with us on yeah. LinkedIn and uh, get Rowan and Derek to invite us back and we'll come and do another one sometime. In person, ideally. Um, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've put our LinkedIn details. So that's, if you have any questions after, just message either of us and we always get back to you. Okay. Hey, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Join me in thanking Sarah and John. Thank you, <laughs> really. Great, Take and thanks care. everyone Have for joining. Evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.